let's continue our models of fiber bundles, of ideal fiber bundles. On the end of uh, last lecture, we uh, discussed the scheme. We uh, said that uh, uh, fiber, um, fiber strength P and fiber breaking strain A are random quantities uh, and exist some joint probability density function UPA. Uh, so that, and uh, P is from interval P min P max, as well as A is from some interval A min A max. This domain we call omega. Evidently, uh, the mean strand P bar is integral over our domain P times UPA dPdA, as well as the mean breaking strain is given by this integral. It's a general definition of mean, mean value. We will need also a marginal probability density function of breaking strain, GA, which is, as you know, the integral from UPA dP over all P values. Uh, also, marginal distribution function we can use as an integral from small g. Small g a is probability density, capital G a is function, is a distribution function, and it's integral from this function g, only because a is uh, upper limit in this integral, therefore I changed uh, the integrating quantity to another symbol, maybe alpha. Yes, uh, it is shown here that the mean value, it's only for, uh, for our sureness, uh, that the mean value A of uh, fiber breaking, fiber breaking uh, strain A bar, which is from point of view of definition given by this equation, after using of this here, we obtain this one, which is well and must be. So we are right, no mistakes in our equation. Uh, we will use also a conditional probability density function of strand. Means strand of the fibers at a given value of breaking strain. It is shown on this picture. What I mean? Let's imagine that uh, no all fibers but also fibers having practically same value of breaking strain. Same value of breaking strain, yeah? Uh, I can say the breaking strain is lying uh, from some A to A plus DA in an elemental interval. But the strength of uh, such fibers can, is, difficult, is uh, different. These green points have some distribution, but only these green points, yeah? No this point, no this point, only the green points which are schematically uh, have in my uh, elemental thin strip on our. The distribution of, uh, of strands of such only these fibers, this subset, we call as a conditional PDF, probability density function, conditional probability density function. Uh, and the symbol is a psi P by A. P is random variable. It is probability density function of random variable P, but no from all fibers, then only from fibers having given value of A. A is parameter. Okay? This is the conditional probability density function. This function is very good known in theory of probability. And it is, it is valid that this conditional probability density function is UPA by GA. 
joint probability density function by marginal probability density function. Why it is in short shown here? Because the relative frequency of GADA must, uh, times it is shown here and it is written here. It needn't comment. In each case, it is in each <coughs> teaching book for theory of probability. Yes. We also will uh, we also we will uh, use also a conditional mean value of strand. What I mean under them? Uh, let's take all these green points in our differentially thin uh, strip, and let's make the uh, mean value, but only from these green points, mean value of strain. Uh, sorry. <laughs> no, <laughs> mean value of, st of strand, yeah? Mean strand value, uh, because strain is same for each green, green points, uh, fibers from this green, from this differential area. So this mean value from all uh, green points is some, uh, some blue value which is here. I will uh, write it under the symbol PA with bar. It means mean value of a strand from fibers having given value A, A is parameter. And this mean value, conditional mean value of strand, is as every time the definition of mean, so that it is integral over P uh, from P times probability density function of P, A is parameter, P is random variable, times dp, okay? And using this, uh, this uh, ratio, we obtain also uh, pa bar in this form, in this e uh, expression. So, second, uh, we assume that a large number of fibers creates a fiber bundle. No 2, no 10, no 15, then thousand, million, more, more, how you want. Very large uh, number of fibers. Third assumption. For strain relations of our fibers, S as a function of epsilon, are mutually similar in such a manner that before breaking strain, epsilon smaller than breaking strain A, for each fiber is valid that our function S epsilon for strain function is proportional, uh, coefficient of proportionality key, to, okay, uh, to, sum, uh, to sum average function as bar epsilon. Uh, so S bar epsilon is an average function, K is parameter characterizing individual fiber. What I mean? Let's imagine that the set of uh, force uh, strain, um, force strain functions of all fibers is uh, this set of red, of black, uh, black curves. They are, uh, from point of view of shape, similar so that it exists some red function, we call it as an average function, yeah? and each other, uh, each individual for strain function of fiber can be interpreted as k, k times s bar epsilon, this red function. Yeah? Is it acceptable? No, yeah, okay. Uh, so each red, uh, each uh, black uh, curve is something like magnification <laughs> of, of our red, red, red average function. Uh, let's use a convention, let's construct our average function so that uh, on this function is also mean break point. It is the point, mean break point, which coordinates A bar, P bar, mean mean value, mean of uh, fiber breaking strain, and mean of fiber strength, yeah? 
So that let's construct our average function so that uh, this point is lying on this red curve. Well, then it is valid. We said S is S, uh, is S epsilon is k times S bar epsilon. It is in black here. But uh, on the uh, if uh, on the end point of fiber, immediately before break of fiber, the force is equal to strength. S is equal to P. Yeah. Epsilon is equal to breaking strain A. But we said it's k times s bar epsilon. Now k, k times s bar on the epsilon we write, on the place of epsilon we write A. Yeah? So we have from this P is equal k times s bar A. We obtain k as a ratio P by s bar A. And finally, we can write before break of fibers, if epsilon small equal a, we can write then s is, this is earlier k, okay, p by s bar a times s bar epsilon. After break, it is zero, of course. What we need to know now? For each fiber, we need to know a couple of quantities. p fiber breaking uh, strain ah sorry <laughs> the fiber uh, fiber strand and uh, a fiber breaking strain two scalars no whole function force uh, strain only two scalars p and a and for each for all fibers together we need to know one function function s bar, uh, our average function, our earlier red function. Okay. Now we want to construct mean force per fiber in a fiber bundle. And when we uh, loaded some bundle fiber from such fibers, in each fiber is another force in the moment, isn't it? So that we want to, we want to uh, calculate a mean force per one fiber in our bundle. It will be uh, formulated in two steps. In first step, epsilon, our uh, strain of bundle, is smaller epsilon is smaller than minimum value of breaking strain from set of our fibers inside of bundle. What it means? No one fiber is broken. All fibers are functionable. We are with our epsilon under the amin, under the minimum of breaking strain of fibers. So, uh, the mean force per fiber we, in bundle we will call as S star. Generally, subscript star, uh, I reserved in this lecture for uh, quantities related to bundle. So, it is mean force per fiber in bundle, S star. What is it? As each mean. Generally written, it is S, force in general fiber, times probability density function, joint probability density function, times to both differential quantities, and integral over whole domain of couples PA. Yes. After rearranging, uh, we obtain this here, it's evident. Uh, on the place of uh, of U P uh, uh, sorry, on the place of S, on the place of S, we can use this expression. So we obtain this here. We can because no fiber is broken, no fiber have S equal zero. Now all fibers 
have some force, this force. We obtain this here. After rearranging this here, uh, this equation, in this equation we uh, multiply and divide by marginal distribution, uh, marginal probability density function GA. Therefore, blue because we we multiply and divide uh, by the same expression. And this here in the brackets we know it is PA bar conditional mean value of strength. Yeah? It is this here. Well, so that on the end we can write a star is given by such equation. It has mean force per fiber in a, in a fiber bundle when epsilon is smaller than a min when all fibers are before broken point. Before broken. Well, now the second part of this derivation. Let's imagine that epsilon of bundle, strain of bundle, is lying between two borders, a min and a max. What it means intuitively? Our uh, strain of bundle is so high that some, but no all, fibers are broken and other fibers are not broken. It is between two, in interval from a min to a max, between value a min and value a max. How is now the mean force per one fiber in fiber bundle, so loaded fiber bundle. Of course, we must start with the same expression. A star is integral of S times U P A D P D A S in case A. Although this equation is same as in case A, this here, yeah? This one. But now the integral over a, we uh, will uh, rearrange as a sum of two integrals. It is definite integral. Definite integral for, for um, a, uh, a min to a max. Uh, so that it must be also integral from a min to our epsilon plus the same integral from epsilon to a max, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, here is what is uh, what is uh, uh, what is the force S in our first integral. This one. Uh, upper limit is a min. Lower limit. Lower limit is a min. Upper limit is epsilon. In this interval, all a are smaller then epsilon, so that each fiber, each fiber is broken. Each fiber is broken. For S we uh, need to use S equal zero. And because S equal zero, all this integral must be equal zero. In the second, inter in the second integral, uh, a is epsilon is lower limit, so that each a is higher than epsilon. Fiber breaking strain is higher than epsilon of our bundle. So that on the place of S we need to use uh, earlier shown um, earlier equation this here and uh, sorry. And uh, other derivation is uh, same than in uh, case A. Uh, on the end, we obtain this structure, this, uh, this expression. How is the difference? This is the same than this here. Only lower limit here is a min, and lower limit here is epsilon, another. Yeah? 
The difference is only in this uh, lower, uh, lower limit, lower, lower bo border of our integral. Yes. For completeness of our ideas, if epsilon is higher than a max, then evidently all fibers are broken, so that S star mean force per one fiber must be equal to zero. It's trivial and evident. Well, sometimes it's possible some to use some assumption, which, are, which I call as a symmetrical strength assumption. Assumption of symmetrical strength. Uh, it is valid on, on our left picture, but no on our right picture. I will explain it. Let's imagine the uh, situation uh, like on our left picture. In this differentially small strip, is uh, exist some endpoints or some force strain curves of fiber. There are our green points here. The conditional mean value from all of, uh, of uh, strength from this green fibers only is lying on the on our average function here. Okay? Also, in another strip, differential uh, elemental strip, uh, the mean value of fibers which have its uh, strength, uh, uh, which, uh, which in, in this uh, elemental strip, the mean, conditional mean value, is lying also on our average red curve. In then, in this case, the structure is a little sym uh, of these graphs is a little symmetrical, therefore I call it symmetrical strength, assumption of symmetrical strength. It needn't be valid. It can but need not be valid. The second picture show that it, uh, it, is, it is not valid here. For example, here, the main mean value of, uh, uh, from uh, these uh, green pictures is here, but the value, corresponding value of uh, average function is here. It's not the same point, yeah? The same here, it is from other side. So this assumption can, but needn't be valid. Nevertheless, in the practical, in the praxis, based on my experience, often this assumption is roughly valid. <laughs> if it is valid, that we can say that the conditional mean value, PA bar, <coughs> is same, then the corresponding value on our uh, average function is equal to S bar A. If yes, then for S star, this is our three cases, A, B, C. Uh, the ratio P A, P A bar by S bar A, which is in our earlier equation, is now equal 1. Yeah? It was, here is this, this ratio, here is this ratio, yeah? It's now equal 1. And therefore, we can write this one. But what is this one? Integral from probability density function or uh, over all domain, so that it is equal one. And uh, before uh, uh, before uh, coming epsilon equal a min, we can write that uh, uh, that the uh, force mean force per one fiber corresponds to the average our average function. In the second case, it was the case epsilon uh, in, in the interval from a min to a max. We had we derived this equation. After rearranging uh, means this ratio equal one, we obtain this, 
and its integral from epsilon to a max from g a. Integral from epsilon to maximum. What is it? It's evidently 1 minus uh, distribution function. Yeah? So, and the distribution function of, of uh, marginal distribution function of A was called capital G. Uh, yeah? So that we have a star is S bar epsilon times 1 minus G epsilon and that's all. Easier than in this case if this assumption of the of the symmetry, the symmetrical strength assumption is valid, then the equations are more easier. Of course, if all fibers are broken, then the force, also the mean force per one fiber is equal to zero. So we have the equations for bundle. Uh, bundle uh, strength per one fiber in no, no strength that the force per one fiber in bundle in relation to epsilon. We can calculate such such function as star as a function of epsilon. Yeah. If epsilon is smaller than a min, then it's without problem. When uh, epsilon is higher than a min, then some fibers are broken, and by increasing of epsilon, more and more fibers is broken. So that this curve have an other shape, uh, have min, minim, minimum one maximum, and then is decreasing to zero. Generally, say it can be. It can be here more local maximums, maxima, and also some broken in this border and so on. It, it can be complicated. Theoretically, it is possible. Normal way, by our type of bundles and fibers, this part have only one maximum. So that, and what is the maximum? This maximum, it is the point point of maximum force is a strength. Strength, mm, a strength of bundle by number of fibers, strength value per one fiber. Well, and how to obtain, let's imagine we will solve only this case, no this case, it's too, too complicated. This case we will solve, we will study. How to obtain this point? No. How to obtain maximum of curve? The derivative must be equal zero. Well, so that I need to, uh, this maximum must be in our integral from a min to a max, evidently. By a max, all fibers are broken. By a min, no one fiber is broken. So this maximum must be in our integral from a min to a max. So we need to derive uh, uh, the derivative from our from, from from this equation. Yeah? Derivative from this equation, and then say this derivative must be equal to zero. It is shown here. Nothing special. Uh, here is derivative. I, I think I need not to comment the mathematical steps. They are all here. Uh, they are all here. You can uh, quietly home to see the, the mathematical way. It's derivative, nothing, nothing more. And after differentiation, when we have this mm, resulting uh, expression for derivative, we say this derivative shall be equal zero. Because equal zero, uh, where if epsilon is equal a star, in which point 
is the derivative equal to zero. It is the maximum of force per one fiber in, in bundle. And this moment corresponds to breaking uh, strain of bundle. Breaking strain of bundle is A star. So that in the point epsilon equal A star, this derivative must be equal zero. We know this expression, we use this, we made it, and then we obtain this expression, zero equal this, after uh, last, last uh, uh, rearranging, we obtain this equation. This is good. Why? When we know our average function s star s bar a, when we know uh, the function of uh, conjugate uh, mean value, p a bar. When you know uh, marginal uh, probability density function of breaking along uh, breaking a strain of fibers, then uh, only one quantity one uh, one quantity is unknown on our left hand side, and it is a star breaking strain of bundle. Here, it's. It's here uh, in the derivative and here, yeah? We can find which of A star we must use on the right hand side because to ob obtain value 1. So this is the question of uh, finding of root of this equation. A star is root of this equation, yeah? You, you must do, use some numerical method for a finding of uh, root of equation, but not too too difficult to use it. Usually, you need to to use some numerical method. So complicated the equation is not possible to solve uh, numerically the root from this. Is it clear here, yeah, principally? So that from this equation we can obtain a star. We can obtain the breaking strain of bundle. And when we have the breaking strain of bundle, then we use our general equation for uh, force per one fiber in bundle. And on the place of epsilon, we give A star breaking strain, so that we obtain uh, P star, which is uh, P star, which is. Uh, uh, force, uh, breaking, breaking force per one fiber by bro break moment of bundle. Yeah. So the last couple of uh, equations allow to evaluate A star and P star. Easier case we obtain when we accept uh, symmetrical strength Ix assumption. If that, this one, then uh, using uh, our earlier this equation, this ratio is equal one, so that uh, it is this here and uh, sorry, yes, and uh, because this assumption p a star bar must be s bar a star, and so. After a small rearranging, because this is one minus distribution function, we obtain this expression. Root of this expression is a, a breaking strain of bundle. And using this expression, which is um, derived earlier, we obtain the force per one fiber by the moment of break of bundle. So last couple of equations allow to evaluate a, bar, a star and P star if uh, the assumption of symmetrical strength is valid. It is the way how to obtain, how to solve uh, the break of bundle. Uh, 
next slides bring no new logical moment. Next slides are only the mathematical rearranging. We introduce some relative variables and uh, rearrange our, our uh, equations to another form using these relative quantities. And the final, the final equation is better for, uh, for calculation. Therefore, uh, it is here. I don't want to comment it because if somebody will uh, know it, you can read slowly my slides and this rearranging absolve with me without commentary. I want only uh, say about two uh, interesting quantities. It is the strength utilization coefficient eta p. It's also one of relative quantities. Eta p, which is bundle strength related to one fiber, p star, by p bar, which is mean fiber strength. Yeah? Uh, by the way, when all fibers, our case number one, our trivial case, when all fibers have the same uh, properties, then this, uh, this ratio, the strength utilization coefficient is one, isn't it? Okay. This is the first. The second is, which I want to say to you, is the breaking strain utilization coefficient which is similarly eta A, bundle breaking strain, mean fiber breaking strain. Fiber breaking, uh, bundle breaking strain by mean fiber breaking strain. Yeah? Well, here is a lot of, a lot of slides which rearrange our equations and say what is what. And uh, we came to an example, uh, an, an theoretical example. I will, because uh, I want to, to show you, to show you uh, only the results of our, of results of our calculation. An theoretical example, uh, which is here based on easiest, really easiest. Uh, why I want to present the result here? Because use the same way, you can also construct another calculation which is not so easy and so on. But principally, you can follow my way. We have a lot of uh, assumptions here. It means uh, uh, assumption one, let the force strain relation of fibers be linear. So the stress strain uh, stress strain, uh, force strain curves of each fiber are linear, so that also the mean, mean uh, function uh, is, the average function is, is linear here. Second, let the distribution of breaking points be normal, means Gaussian two-dimensional uh, probability density function, uh, the, the, the distribution of all endpoints of this black lines have the distribution like two-dimensional goals, Gaussian distribution. The third, let's accept the assumption of symmetrical strength. Let the assumption of symmetrical strength be valid. And using these three assumptions, we obtain after application of our equations. This uh, graph, by the way, the equation here uh, is, uh, is shown. I will comment this equation later. On the abscissa is epsilon by a bar. What is it? Strain by mean breaking strain per one fiber. Yo? I call it in the moment E. Relative quantity. <laughs> and, and the ordinate is S star, force, mean force per one fiber in bundle, by mean value of fiber, uh, fiber, fiber strength. 
It, uh, it is, when we calculate it, the result is that this function based only on the coefficient of variation of fiber breaking strain. No mean value, no standard devi deviation, but only uh, coefficient of variation. Uh, I use coefficient of variation as is usually uh, used in theoretical work, so that, for example, no 15 percentage, then 0 0.15 dimensionless quantity. Yeah? Uh, see how it is. If coefficient of variation is equal to 0, then our case is reduced to our trivial case uh, because linear uh, force strain uh, function, then uh, it is go increasing to end point and ping, all is, all is destroyed, all is out. But when we, we have, for example, I don't know, on the uh, second uh, curve here, V is 0 0.3, 30 percentage of coefficient of variation of uh, fiber breaking strain. It can be real in some natural fibers. Uh, by cotton, we have some experiences that it is perhaps around 0 0.2. But let's show this curve is 0 0.3. The, uh, the, uh, the, this is related to force, so that the force per one fiber is higher, uh, mean force is higher, 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 but then is decreasing. Yeah? Why? Because in the bundle, more and more fibers is broken, and the force which earlier taken the broken fibers must now take on his body <laughs> the fibers which are not broken. So I think it is clear. Uh, by the way, to obtain uh, this function wasn't too difficult because um, it's T, it's, it's sigma, and this capital F, it is a, a distribution function of standardized uh, Gaussian distribution, absolutely known in each tables or in each um, computer software is the standard distribution, normal stand, standard distribution, standard normal distribution. Yeah? What we obtained in our, uh, in our example uh, for uh, strength and uh, breaking strain utilization coefficients. When we calculate it graphically, uh, calculate it numerically of course, we obtain the following graphs. This function is a strength utilization coefficient. You can see that this both also are function of coefficient of variation of breaking uh, strain of fibers. This coefficient, uh, the strength utilization coefficient, eta p, is permanently decreasing. It is a very high uh, well, uh, interval from VA, from uh, coefficient of variation VA. It's going from zero to one. One is absolutely unreal value, but only for, uh, for uh, to understand the general trend. Uh, so it is decreasing and uh, uh, utilization coefficient of strength, of, uh, bre uh, of breaking strain, is decreasing and then increasing for high values of coefficient of variability. Nevertheless, in the real part, which is roughly to 0 0.3, so that this part, it, it is in more details shown on right-hand side picture. Both curves, I can say, are decreasing. The utilization is not small. You can see that, for example, by 0 0.2, the very often used value by cotton fibers, 
this value is 0 0.7. The bundle strand is uh, only 70 percentage through, through, through this mechanism only. It's only 70 percentage of mean, mean, st uh, mean tenacity of uh, individual fibers. 30 percentage down. Only this effect. Well, uh, you see both graphs, you see that such effect is very, it can be very uh, significant. Therefore, from this is going out one practical, uh, practical result for you. And uh, when we don't want to calculate numerically all this and have not in, enough input variables. You see that if coefficient of variation of fiber breaking strain is high, then the bundle, uh, bundle uh, strand is small. When you have some material having high value Va, be carefully this strength of your, for example, yarn, because this variability of fiber, uh, fiber breaking strength can bring smaller tenacity of your yarn. It's intuitive result. Yeah? Check it experimentally and I know one. It's interesting that also using no normal than log normal distribution, we obtain similar curves. Also, uh, using some uh, uh, type of Weibull distribution, we obtain also uh, qualitatively a little other curve, but not too far from our uh, our example from uh, from normal. Uh, this result and our equations can be applied also to the hamburger theory. Hamburger theory speak about the blend of two type of fibers. But traditionally, one type of fibers, each fiber have the same properties. Now we can solve the problem. We have two type of fibers, but or two materials, for example, viscose and polyester. But uh, the viscose fibers are not all same. They have some uh, some distribution of uh, properties and polyester fibers are also no all same and have uh, uh, their old they uh, they they uh, own uh, distribution principally it's possible to solve also this case and i want only show you that earlier uh, according to hamburger we, uh, you can obtain this thin line. It is the broke, broke line which we, which we uh, constructed in uh, last lecture. But uh, using this, uh, this uh, probabilistic model to hamburgers and generalized uh, the hamburger terror using this model, uh, we obtain this thick line. The position, the position is a little larger. Yeah? It's an example. Here, here I have shown what is uh, input. Uh, and uh, by another type of uh, input values, you can also, on the place of hamburger, obtain such curve. So that these curves are uh, more are nearer to our experimental experiences. So uh, I hope that the introduction, because my speech was only an introduction to the probabilistic uh, model of a fiber bundle can show you the general way how to solve it. Also, these slides are not the, uh, the worst which you can meet in your professional life. Uh, Dr. Das and I, we prepared a more general concept which, uh, uh, which uh, respect not only the variability of 
uh, strength and uh, breaking strain of fibers, but also the variable, the crimp and variability of crimp of fibers. Let's imagine the fibers which have uh, same strength, same breaking elongation when they are straight. But because the fibers have some, some, uh, some, some difficult uh, shape, by elongation at first, practically without force, we changed this shape to the straight shape and then started force. And this, uh, this effect can be from fiber to fiber different, also probabilistic model. Mm -hmm.